Throughout the history of Britain's railways, it seems that somewhere, for some reason, there has always been somebody trying to take a bus and make it into a train. Whilst technically you can argue that some of the earliest railway carriages were mere adaptations of stagecoaches, and with trams being an entirely different argument about the amalgamation of the two, it was truly with the invention of the internal combustion engine that the age of the bus-train hybrid came to be. However, despite a number of attempts, it didn't really take off as an idea until the late 1970s, when British Railways and British Leyland, boy what a partnership that was, decided to make everyone's favourite train, the Pacer! Yay! However, worry not dear viewer, because this video is not about the Pacer, but about an idea that almost got off the ground a decade before. Back in the 60s, the Sadler Rail Coach Company, headed by former Wing Commander Charles Sadler Ashby, started work on their prototype for a four-wheeled rail bus, dubbed the Pace Railer. Consisting of a luxury coach body mounted onto a rail chassis, the Pace Railer ran on pneumatic tyres via its drive wheels with flange wheels at either end to guide it along the rails, and thanks to lightweight bodywork, weighed in at a mere 6 tonnes around 15 tonnes lighter than the basic pacer that would appear around a decade later. However, rather than being a people mover, the pace railer was intended more as a luxurious excursion vehicle, with the intention being to allow comfortable travel for 50 people through scenery only able to be seen by rail travel. Essentially, it was a coach for the railways. Reportedly, the plan for the Pace Railer was for travel companies to provide scenic trips on lines that had been closed down by the beaching cuts, with views unattainable by both car or coach trips. Development of the Pace Railer cost Sadler Ashby £15,000, around £240,000 today, but was claimed to have cheaper running costs than a standard railway locomotive. Power for the pace railer came from a standard diesel engine used in normal road going coaches at the time, with speeds of 70 miles per hour able to be reached. Access to the vehicle was via two doors positioned above rotating steps that folded back into the bodywork, allowing ease of access from track level, and featured all round visibility thanks to large panoramic glass windows. One notable design flaw of the pace railer was the lack of dual driving controls, which would prove inconvenient in non-forward operation. In order to market the pace railer to possible buyers, the Sadler Railcoach Company based themselves at the recently closed Droxford station on the Meon Valley Railway in Hampshire, and used both the station and the line to Wickham station. This section of line had been closed to traffic in 1962, with Charles Ashby purchasing the station and line shortly after closure. In order to show the Pace Railer's ability to interested parties, a special 1 in 10 gradient was built at Droxford. To raise funding for vehicle development, space was rented out at Droxford Station for the storing of locomotives and rolling stock, including USA Tank No. 30064. In 1966, Ashby set up the Sadler Vect Rail Company with intent to purchase the Ride to Cows Railway on the Isle of Wight for use for the Pace Railer. However, despite initial interest and a display of the vehicle at a trade show on the island, this idea never came to pass. Back on the mainland, the Pace Railer was facing problems with not just the lack of interest, but the public itself. Regular vandalism of the site, including blocking of tracks and jamming of points, eventually escalated into the burning of the pace railer itself in May 1970, with Droxford Station having been targeted for some time. It's alleged that an Isle of Wight bus operator was behind the vandalism at Droxford, including the burning of the pace railer, however there seems to be no evidence supporting these claims. Following the vandalism, the pace railer was not rebuilt by Ashby, with its underframe eventually, and rather ironically, ending up forming the structure of a pedestrian bridge on the Isle of Wight Railway, though which bridge this is remains unclear. Charles Sadler Ashby died in February 1976, with the Sadler Railcoach Company dissolving that December, 
having not sold a single pace railer to any party after more than a decade in operation. However, Britain wouldn't have to wait long before an army of rail buses would rattle their way across the nation. That's a story for another time. Wait, Darby's to blame for all of this? Fuck! Thank you for watching. I'm gonna have a long, hard think about what Darby's done. Remember to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. It's all our fault.